Your business has a fantastic collaborative task management solution built right into Microsoft 365 and it's called Microsoft Planner and in this video I'm going to show you how to use it. But before we start my name is Jonathan Edwards please check out 365gearsystem.com we help businesses with the Microsoft 365 and the cyber security. So how do you get tasks completed in your business? How does everybody in your business know what tasks they should be working on at any given time? Let's take for example finance. How do you know what date the invoices need to be sent out? How do you know how to send the invoices out? Is all this information inside someone's head? What happens if that person isn't there that day? Or worse still, what happens if they leave your business? What your business needs in order to be successful are solid business processes. Everybody in your team needs to know what they should be doing at any given time. And you can use a tool that comes included with Microsoft 365 to do all that. And that tool is called Microsoft Planner. Now Microsoft Planner is such a fantastic collaborative to-do system. Now it builds upon another tool in Microsoft 365 called Microsoft To-Do. So what are the differences between the two? Well Microsoft To-Do are for your own personal tasks, whereas Microsoft Planner are for the tasks that all your team should be doing. And luckily, they talk to each other. So without further ado, let's jump onto the computer behind me and I'll show you Microsoft Planner. So the first question is, how do you access Microsoft Planner? Well, there's a couple of ways, and I'm gonna show you both in this video. The first way is to access it through logging into your Microsoft 365 web portal. Now you can see I'm logged into my web portal here. Down the left hand side, I've got some of the applications that I've got access to, but I can't see Microsoft Planner. So what I'll do is go up to the top and click on App Launcher. Now some more applications appear and you can see that Microsoft Planner is one of them. So what I can do is simply click on there to launch Microsoft Planner. Now Microsoft Planner is a web only application, meaning you can only access it through a web browser or through Microsoft Teams, which I'm gonna show you later. You can't install an application onto your device. So this is Microsoft Planner and you can see that it's fairly easy to use. Down the left hand side, just starting at the bottom, you've got all the plans that either you've created or you've got access to. You've then got an Assign to Me tab and these are all the tasks that have been assigned to you. Then you've got a hub which is like a, a hub view of everything and then you can click on Create a New Plan which we're going to do now. Now Microsoft have created some templates for you, so you could click on project management or business plan, but we're going to click on new business plan, which creates just a blank plan. The first thing we need to do is name the plan. So what I'm going to do is call this marketing department. So this is going to be just like a, a marketing plan for a marketing department. Now we can add this plan to an existing group, which means everybody in that group will have access to this plan. And then the next section is about privacy and sensitivity. So we've got public or private. If you choose public, everybody within your business will have access to this plan. So you've got to use this cautiously, especially if there's sensitive information within the plan. I always choose private because after you've done that, you can add members manually to access the plan. And then we'll click on create. Now, when it comes to creating plans, as I've done here, you can create a plan for a specific department. You could have a small plan for your entire business. You could create a plan for a specific project that you're doing that has an end date. But for now, let's continue with this fictitious marketing department plan. So to begin with, let's show you a few of the basic settings just to get you started. If we click on these three dots here and go down to plan settings. One of the first things I like to do is all about the look and feel. So the existing white background is a little bit plain. We've got some options here where we can make the background stand out a little bit. So we choose a new background. That looks a little bit loud, so maybe choose something like that. That's fine for me. In this section as well, if you ever want to delete the plan, you can do so here. If we click on the Group tab, we can change the privacy. If you remember, we set that up as private. If we ever want to make it public, we can. 
and then the notifications. So I tend to leave these just as they are now. The first one, which is unchecked, is about the group email settings. This means that any time any task is assigned or completed, everyone in the group will get an email. This can become a little bit noisy. You can end up getting lots of emails that aren't relevant to you. At the bottom, I usually use these as ticks because these are specific to me. So if someone assigns me a task or if one of my tasks is late or due today, then I'll get an email. And I find that works quite well. So to come out of here, we just click on there. Now, one of the first things you might want to do if you've created a plan just like I have is add members to that plan. Otherwise, there's only you that can access it. And to do that, it's very easy. We'll just go up to the top where it says members and we just start typing names in. So I can go like that. I can add some people within my business to this plan. And then to remove them, if we ever want to down the line, we just come back into here, choose their name and click on remove there. So that is nice and easy. Now, before we jump into the buckets and the tasks themselves, there's just a few other things that I want to show you. When you create a new plan, there's a SharePoint site that is automatically created at the back end. So you can go on here and we can click on sites. And as you can see, the SharePoint site is called the same name as our plan. So this is where you would store all your documents, for example. So if we click on the plan again and we go to files, then you can see this is directed to the same place, but just the documents. So why would you need a SharePoint site with lots of documents on when we're talking about planner? Well, you might have tasks within planner that need documents attached to them. They might be how to's. So you might create a task, but it might have a how to document attached to it. So whoever is doing that task knows exactly how to do it. So for an example in here, I'm going to create a new word document and you'll see why slightly later in this video. We'll call this blog template. Okay blog template. Now I'm not going to put anything in the document itself, but pretend this is a full blog template. And then once we've finished, we'll close that off. We can close these SharePoint sites for now. And that takes us back to the plan. Also, there's a calendar attached to the plan as well. That's in scheduler. So when we start creating tasks, we can assign due dates to those tasks and everything will appear in our calendar. And to take it a step further, you can click on there. And if you like, you can add the calendar of this plan to your own Outlook. So if you're using Outlook, which I expect you are, you can see everything from the marketing department plan within your Outlook. So that is a nice, useful feature. So now we've talked about all the back end features, it's time to get stuck into the tasks themselves and the buckets. So you can see at the top here, there's something called to do. This is just a bucket and here it says you can add a new bucket. So what are buckets? Well, buckets really are logical groupings of tasks. And again, planner is a bit of a blank canvas, so you can design it however you want. In my fictitious marketing department, I'm going to call my, my first bucket, I'm going to call it YouTube video. Okay. In my second bucket, I'm going to call this telesales. In my third bucket, I'm going to call this social media. Just type that in there. And my fourth bucket, let's call this email marketing. So these are logical groupings of the tasks that I'm going to create. So let's go ahead and create some tasks. I'm going to write a video. In here, we're going to film the video. We're going to edit the video. We're going to upload to YouTube. So there are four tasks that we can use for our video. And I can swap these around. I can drag and drop as I need to do, like so. Now let's talk about telesales. I mean, this isn't really marketing, it's more sales. But let's create one in here, make 10 sales calls. Social media, publish. Instagram post, publish. TikTok post. Email marketing, send out new email marketing. 
So you can see, as I said, these are just examples. But you can see now that our marketing department, all the tasks that we've got to do are starting to take shape. Now let's look inside of tasks because there's much more features that we can take advantage of. So firstly, write video, okay? We can assign this to somebody. So let's assign this to Isabel, she can write the video. Then we can add something called a label to this task. So what's a label? Well, this can add more granularity to your task. And if you click on there, these are all colors. But what you can do is you can change the name of these colors. So you could have something like need help for example. So if Izzy needs help with this task, she can simply label that as needing help. Again, it's just an example, but hopefully it can get you thinking about how you can design it for your own needs. Then at the moment, this is in the YouTube bucket, but here we can move it along as well. We can also move it along just by dragging and dropping it if we need to. Back into the task, we've got a progress, so we can say it's not started, it's in progress, or it's completed. And then we've got a priority. So for this, I'm going to set this as an important task because we really need to get that video put together. We can start this at any time. So let's start this on Wednesday morning. It's actually due on Wednesday as well. And this is a good feature. It's repeating it. So we want to create a video every week. So actually, let's repeat this on a weekly basis. And then we can add some notes here. So I can say video script needs to be about 1500 words for example and then as soon as we start writing some notes this little box appears here show on card and i will click on there and if we come out of the task you can see that my description now appears on the card so i can go back into it and then the next section is checklist so what's a checklist well if you look at the title of this video it's called write video some people might say that's fairly vague so to help Isabel a little bit more we can put together a checklist so we can say create word file in SharePoint write video about Microsoft 365 use our normal intro use our normal outro okay so these are just some more things that can help Isabel and again, once we start writing these checklists, you can see the show on card appears as well. So if I just unselect that and click on that one, you can see that the mini tasks are added to this view as well. So that's fairly helpful. Now back into the task again. Here, you see we can add the attachment. So if I add a blog, let's have a look here. Just I'll create one within in this task here. Publish blog, okay? So if I click on here, and then click on the attachment and then go to from teams files can you remember that blog template that we created earlier all your teams folders and files will appear here so i can simply click on there and click save and that appears on the task itself and if we close it you can see we've got a bit of a preview but there's nothing in it so we can't see it because that show card is actually listed and we can untick that so that is where files come into it now let's look at a few other settings. So going to film video, what we're going to say here is this is urgent. Again, all examples. Edit video, well, that is quite a low priority. Upload to YouTube, again, it's quite important. Make 10 sales calls, that's an urgent task. We'll assign this to Simon because Simon does that. We want him to do that every day, so I will start that tomorrow, but we want to repeat that on a daily basis. And then we go back to here. So what else can I show you? So we're getting a bit of a plan formulating. Well, I can look on schedule now and you can see that make 10 sales calls is repeated every day. We've got the writing video every week because we've done those as repeating. So we're getting a bit of a calendar for the marketing department. Let's go back to the board. We've got a couple of different views here. We can go on to grid. That shows you like a list of tasks. It shows you in a different format. Some people might prefer this view. It's got all the information on. It's just in a list. And you can add tasks here as well. Also, we can look at charts. We can look at like members. Isabel's got a task. Simon's got a task. I'm not very busy. There's seven unassigned tasks. So what I could do here is think, well, I'll take a couple of those tasks for myself. Also, the priorities and the buckets, it's all laid out in a nice chart format. 
Then up here, if we just go back to board again, we can group these tasks at the moment, the group by buckets. So the nice logical places to look. But what we could do is say, well, let's group them by priority. So we've got a couple of urgent tasks that need to be completed. So we could start here and we could work our way down. Or we can group them by who they're assigned to. So again, we've got all these unassigned ones. We've got Izzy and Simon, they've got a task each. This just alters the view. I find it, it better to just use the bucket view, but you can use it however you want. And then there's also a couple of nice things you can do just to make it visually look better. YouTube, we can add emojis. So I'm on a Windows computer, Windows key, full stop. It brings up my little emoji and I can just type in here video. And you can see, because it's all to do with YouTube, I can add an emoji on here. It just makes it spring off the page a little bit more. You can do the same on the tasks. So again, I could do that. I could put a maybe a pen, because we're writing out, we're writing a video. So I could do that on there, and it just makes it jump off the page a little bit more. So at the start of this video, I mentioned there's a couple of places that you can access Microsoft Planner. The other way is by using Microsoft Teams. Now, most of our customers, when they access Planner, use Microsoft Teams. Why do they do that? Well, there's just a few more functions within Microsoft Teams. So what they would do is we'd come in here, we'd go to Teams, and we'd create a new team. And we'd click on there, we would click on From Scratch. Again, it's a private group. We call this marketing department, like we did do our team, and then we create it. And at this point, we can add members to the, to the group like we did before, so just add Izzy by clicking Add, and then we can click on Close. And then we've got our marketing department here where we can do things like have conversations and collaborate a little bit better. That's why it's better using Planner here. But how do we access Planner here? Well, we simply click on the plus at the top, and some applications will appear. Now, it's actually this one here called Task by Planner. Now, if you can't see it, just simply type Tasks and it will appear. So as you can see, Task by Planner can be added to the team and we can create a new plan or we can simply link it to our existing plan. It's nice and easy. So that is a brief tutorial of Microsoft Planner. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. As you can see, Microsoft Planner is a great tool for your business. I look forward to seeing you again soon.